know he'll at least be able to go out of here. Well, they started praying even more. And then at month seven, I got up and I ran out the front door. And at this point, I've not been able to slow down and do anything since then. But, you know, that right there is a miracle in itself. But what really is a miracle was basically around 12 years ago, Scottish Wright called me up and said, hey, we'd like to do a case study on you. I said, okay. So I went down, and at that point in time, they'd done every test on the man again. They'd done MRIs, they'd done CAT scans, they'd done CT scans, they'd done every kind of blood work and everything. And then they brought me in and sent me down. They said, listen, said, the reason we've done this, they said that um, out of the 396 cases reported, here's your miracle, guys. I'm the only one walking. That tells me that God's still on the throne. I get out here on a day-to-day basis. I run sound in our local church. And it's a blessing just to do that. And a lot of times I sit around, just like right now, I'm sitting here in the auditorium of the church, just looking around at what God's blessed us with. And guys don't ever take for granted one day that God's given you because every day is a blessing and every day is something in a way that you can witness or at least minister to someone else that's out there. My whole life I've got to work with some of the greatest professionals in Southern gospel music, contemporary gospel music, and I love running Sam, but you know something? The one thing I love more is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The guys, if anything that I could ever tell you is just keep praying because prayer works. And I always know that, you know, there's a guy down here in Georgia that's praying for all y'all out there. I pray that God will keep you safe and will give you all the inspiration to keep going the way that I do. It's been a blessing talking to you, and I just hope that, you know, this has been a blessing to y'all because it's been a blessing to me. I love you, and y'all have a great evening. Well, Brother Lamont, um, you know, we I got questions. Um you know, sure. I, I am uh, I am a hundred percent right with you on praying, and you know you had spent so many months in that hospital praying, and at any time, did it did that make you waver a little bit, saying, "Well, wait a minute, Lord, you know I've been praying all this time and I'm still not seeing nothing. What's going on with that? Is there, you know, I mean we we're all we all have flaws. There's no doubt about it, you know, and and we get discouraged from time to time. And, uh, you know, if it was me, I think I would be like, you know, come on, what's going on here? You know, why is, why are you making me wait so long? Or, you know, what's going on in my life that my prayers are not being answered? You know, is there some unforgiven, you know what I'm saying? You you run this stuff through your mind all the time. Did you ever have a moment like that? You know, to be honest, I, I never did. And the reason that I didn't was because, my dad and my mom, they kept sitting there with me, and they kept telling me, you know, there's some reason or there's something God's got planned for you. And so I never gave up. And I and I guess at the age of 15, I never give up to the point that I couldn't keep going. You know, and so I never did allow myself to go to the point of saying, I give up. 
I always kept going, and, and that's the way that I live my Christian life now is I don't slow down and I don't look back. I keep looking forward, trying to improve myself and and, and to keep doing what God would have me do. Amen, amen. You know, when I was talking to you, there you've got a whole lot going on. You've got more <laughs> going on in your life than most people that I know, and, and I run with a but you know a pretty fast crowd you know uh out here in uh, trucking ministries you know i've got friends that are you know good news distribution they hand out bibles and cds and you know truck stops and the gentleman uh his name is uh, john Knoll that uh does that he, he does so much and you know i i know uh, a lot of people that are busy but you're a busy man uh, what brought you into the music end of it with running soundboards? What brought you from, you know, being in a bed, not able to walk, rising up, running, and, you know, getting to this point? What brought you to the point of that? Well, uh, actually, uh, being in the hospital, uh, it allowed me a lot of time to study and, you know, to, and to think. And, you know, uh, at now I am 53 years old. And, uh, at that time it was the age of 17 or 15. So I didn't have, you know, uh, the only thing I do is read books. And so I got into reading about sound and, you know, um, how sound works in the production of all of it. But what really impressed me more than anything was there was a Southern gospel group that came around and visited down there. And they brought this little, small, rinky-dink sound system in, and they sounded amazing. But what really intrigued me was I watched this guy, and he was adjusting the whole time while they were singing, and it got better and better. And I thought, you know, maybe that's something that I could do. And from that point on, um, I started running sound and learning about sound. And then for about 12 years, I went on the road to my professional as a uh, bass singer for a Southern Gospel group. And then once I come off the road from that, I started running sound for uh, Contemporary Christian, Southern Gospel, and still doing that today. Amen, amen. But, you know, when, I, when you say, uh, you know, the... When we think of the professionals, we think of the big boys, you know. And, uh, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to put this together in my head, you know, how, how you came to the point that you did to get in, to be able to get into the, the league that you call, you know, that we all refer to as the big leagues, you know, in, in running the soundboard. How did you, and what were some of the, you know, the singers that you were setting up for? Well, um, I have uh, set up for uh, Third Day, Mercy Me. Uh, I have uh, went run sound at uh, in Chattanooga. It's called J Fest. We have uh, up there. We do a, a large venue. Bring in anywhere from uh, about fifteen to seventeen different groups. Uh, groups such as uh, uh, Lincoln Brewster. Uh, Toby Mack, um, just, you know, any any one of the groups I have worked with, uh, I would say probably 35 to 40 professional groups. And what really, uh, I have went to a sound studio in uh, Athens, Tennessee, and really that's where that I had got hooked up with uh a sound company called Legacy. And at that point in time, that's when they started J-Fest. And we started running outdoor events for them. And uh, it has grown into a large venue. They still bring a lot of uh, Christian groups up. And uh, it's just, uh, it's a real blessing to go up there and to be able to kick back and uh, sit back on an open lawn venue and just listen to some good contemporary christian music amen amen you know because when i sit and you know when i'm sitting here thinking about all this you know i i look at god's favor on you you know because it doesn't seem like um you know i know there was more to it 
as you were getting into running sound and as uh, your name was getting out there and you were getting the fine tunings of being able to do what you do. But, and you know, it seems to me that, that that would be a hard thing to break into to be able to get up to where you're, uh, you know, with the type of people that you're talking about because it seems like there there would be all kinds of uh, options you know all kinds of people out here that are doing this so i'm looking at it you know as you know with the healing uh, that the lord has given you because it's truly the lord that touched and healed you i know you know that and everybody that's uh, listening here tonight uh that that doesn't even come as a question in their mind uh, of how you you know came to being healed but to get in, to continue in your life as you're going, uh, I mean, you can see God's hand on you. You can see God's favor opening these doors up to you that the average person don't get opened up to them. Yes, this is very true. And the the thing that uh, I guess, you know, God gives everyone a talent. And I guess the way that I really got to the point to where that I knew this is what God wanted me to do was because I had went to um, a uh, sound engineering school. It's called Full Sail. And when I got there, it was just like, you know, they could teach me all the technical uh, things of hooking a sound system up, of uh, the homage of speakers and all of that. And, you know, the compression and all, they could do all that, but they couldn't allow me to hear. Well, the one thing that God blessed me with uh, is the ability to take a standard sound and make it sound like a stereo effect just by closing my eyes and trying to listen to what God's given me. Because there's no, it's nothing I could do on my own and I still don't understand it now but I can walk up to a soundboard and it's just like God opens it up and says you know bless them with what I give you because you know here's the tool that God's given me to be able to reach out to other people and to be able to take voices and instruments and blend them all together and make them sound to the point to where that it's pleasurable to your ears and not just a noise. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, as I'm, as I'm, you know, as I'm sitting here listening and seeing all that the Lord has brought you from and brought you to, and, you know, and to be in the, the profession that you are, and we know how they say, you know, if you enjoy what you're doing, it's not a job. And, you know, people, <laughs> you know, I know, <laughs> I mean, I know so many people that would just, including myself, would love to have what you don't call a job <laughs> because you love it so much just to, you know, just to be around that praise and worship all the time because we know that when, uh, you know, we know the Lord inhabits the praise of his children and just to feel the presence of God as you're spending days and, and hours and hours doing this and being in, uh, you know, in the mix with people that are just praising the Lord and singing some fantastic music and that. I mean, oh my gosh, people would, would uh, you know, what would you give to have that? You know, so he's definitely blessed you. But then you're going to go ahead now and, and throw the uh, the icing on that cake. And uh, when I was talking to you, uh, you even drive a race car. And that's just amazing that <laughs> you wasn't even supposed to walk. You know, <laughs> now you're driving race cars. You're setting up sound for all these uh, professional singers, being in, the, being in that praise and worship with them, being in the presence of the Lord. Like, that. How does that happen? Well, uh, and that's uh, one of the amazing things, you know. Uh, I guess God has just blessed me with uh, the the feel ability because I, just like in our race cars, I can sit down in in a race car and I can drive that thing into the into the corner and just stand on the brakes to get that car to turn. But the thing about it is I can feel it all through, uh, like I can feel it in my legs, I can feel it in my bottom, I can feel it in my back and my hands, and I can feel what the car is doing. So I'm, it's it's just another gift that God allowed me to have. And it's nothing I've done because, 
you know, I am a dumb country boy. But the one thing that, you know, even though that he's blessed me to be able to do that, also, another thing that really I'm getting more enjoyment out of this right now than anything is uh, I do a lot, a lot of woodworking, and, and I build stuff. Well, the thing about it is we built a new church down here, and it had so much stuff that needed to be done that no one else could figure out how to do it. And don't ask me how, but it's just like God said, okay, here's the measurements you need. You know, Here's what you're going to need to build it with. Here's what you're going to need to do to build it. And when he'd give me that, you know, I, I could walk up and I'd take a tape measure, take a speed square, cut all this material out, and it would actually fit, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing about it is, I did it, and I look back, and just like right now, I'm sitting here looking at this, and I'm thinking, man, this is, and please don't think I'm bragging on myself, because this is nothing I've done. I look at it, and I think, golly, bum, this is such a, you know, it's so beautiful, but yet, you know, I don't even realize how that I actually was able to do it. And then I got to thinking about it. Our Savior, you know, Jesus Christ, he died on that cross for us. But what was he? He was a carpenter. You know, I'm nowhere near what Jesus was or anything like that. But, you know, I'm just glad that I can, in just the slightest way, follow in his footsteps. Amen. So you'd be Noah's right-hand man. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> uh, you know, I would love to be. Uh, you know, I, I am nowhere near perfect. And uh, I sin every day, and I have to ask forgiveness for it every day. But, you know, uh, I don't ever take any day for granted, and I don't ever take my salvation for granted because I'm always appreciative of everything that God has given me. And just, you know, every breath I breathe, I, I, I'm not one of these fanatics that, you know, I try to push religion down somebody's throat because I'm going to tell you guys, religion will not get you to heaven. It's that one-on-one -on -one relationship between you and God that's going to get you there. Amen. Amen. That's right. You're exactly right. When uh, Let's go back to your race car. Uh, what kind of racing do you do? Well, uh most people call it uh, modified. Uh, it is, uh, we run uh, a lot of what is called the Lucas Oil Series. Uh, it is a, uh, we run, our chassis is a Longhorn chassis. And uh, we run, uh, our engines is a, uh, mostly they are 430 wide bores. And uh, they're producing somewhere around close to 900 horsepower. And, uh, we can usually on a good day, uh, you know, average tracks, we're turning, uh, five eighths of a mile and somewhere around 16, 15 and a half, 16 seconds. If we got our car set up right. Wow. Yeah. I've got a friend. He's, uh, he's big into racing. He's a spectator. Uh, he doesn't actually drive. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, it's kind of disappointing he wasn't on here tonight because I, I was talking to him about you and uh, you know he could be listening by speaker for all I know, but um, you know I, I know he was uh, asking me questions. I don't know nothing about it, but uh, you know I know that's fast. <laughs> you know I know that's fast. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just pretty it's, amazing. Uh, you know, Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I was just going to say that the thing about it is you know uh, the the cars that we've got now the technology that's in them, uh, and the, you know, used to, you could take a, a car and you take shots and, and you just drove them in there and it was, it was all just brute strength and force just to get a car around. Now it's all finesse and it's all done with, you know, a lot of technology and, uh, you just, you don't realize, um, uh, the, g-forces that's placed upon you inside of one of those cars when you're racing but 
the one thing that I love about it is a lot of times I'll get in there and uh, I'll get my mind on something, and all of a sudden uh, it's just like when they drop that green flag, uh, for some reason I'll start uh, quoting Scripture in my mind, and it helps me to actually hit my marks on the track because it's just, to me, it's like my Christianity. You know, I've got those marks I've got to hit to be able to uh, witness to someone. And it's just like every time I run that car into a corner, I have to find a certain place on that track that it makes that car work its best. And when I go in there and I hit that brake and I bring that rear end around us so that I can pick that throttle back up to bring the front end up to roll it over on the bars to get it down the track, you know, it, um, it's just the technology that allows you to put that car in a straight line. But like I was saying, a lot of times I start quoting scripture in my mind and all of a sudden it just kind of clicks and I'm sitting there thinking, you know, this is just amazing how that if I hit those marks the way that Jesus would ask me to, when I pick that throttle up, I'm going to be straight at your heart and I'm going to be able to witness to you and, you know, uh, allow uh, what God's done for me to maybe bless you. Amen. Well, you know, I mean, let me ask you this. If, as you look forward now, as you're going forward, where do you see yourself going? Because you definitely got the blessings of God on you. I mean, let's face it. You know, you're, you're, you work good with wood. The Lord has blessed you with that. He's blessed you with being able to do soundboards. You know, he's blessed you with the entertainment part of being able to drive a race car. What do you, what do you see in your future right now? You know, um, I really have uh, been thinking about this a lot, and uh, I have uh, two grandchildren that uh, I've been, you know, that the Lord's allowed me to spend some time with here lately. But the thing that I guess that I'm kindly leaning towards right now, uh, I have started helping uh, my son uh, into the the lighting and the sound industry. And with that being said, it's like God in the past uh, couple of years has started opening up doors in this area, and I'm able to go around to a lot of the churches, a lot of the churches that where that they call me when they've got a technical problem or they want to upgrade their sound system. So I've been going and uh, into a lot of the churches, being able to set the sound systems up or you know, taking them out for them to where that we could dial them in to get a, a lot better sound. And uh, I guess God's kindly just um, putting me to the point to where that I'm able to help others because, you know, that's the one reason why I love running sound. Uh, I can sit back and... It don't matter how many uh, inputs I've got from the stage or uh, how many vocalists I've got on stage. Let's say I've got, uh, you know, drums, guitars, pianos, keyboards, vocals, guitars, everything on that stage. You know, it it could add up to 35 to 41 uh, inputs. And I'm able to control all that and make it all into one thing well it's just like now god's given me the desire to you know train other individuals on how to do this i've got the word that i go up to a uh, a church and i've been doing seminars and helping some of their sound engineers learn the difference uh, of setting sound and and the tone qualities that they need but the one thing that i have learned it doesn't matter how much knowledge you have. If you have an ear like a brick, it does not work. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's amazing. But let me ask you this. If um, if you were standing, you know, everybody's listening to you. And they're thinking, well, how, how does this guy get so many blessings like this? 
how does God open so many doors to this guy? You know, I, I've tried this and I've tried that and just nothing seems to work. What would you be, what would be the thing that you would tell them? Honestly, I would, I would say that the only reason God's blessed me the way that he has is because that I never uh, give up on him and he never give up on me. And I've always put my full faith and trust. The Bible states that if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you know, that anything basically is possible. And I guess that God bestowed upon me at a young age that if I believed on him, you know, that uh, all things are possible. And I've never given up on that. The one thing that God has given me is a positive outlook on life. I never, and I don't know why this is, I've never looked at anything as half empty. And I've never seen that there's a problem. There may be an issue, but there's always a solution for it. Amen. And the one thing that uh, I have, I work with a, a thing at our church called Celebrate Recovery. And what we do is anyone that has a hurt, a habit, a hang-up, you know, we we try to minister to them and we try to help them. And a lot of these guys come in here and they have all these, uh, you know, major problems. It might be drugs, it might be alcohol, something like that. And they'll always come up and they'll say, you know, give me an excuse of why they've relapsed or why they've done this or that. I said, okay, that's a great excuse. Now, give me a reason why you've done it. At no point in time has anyone ever gave me a reason of why they've relapsed. They gave me an excuse. And that's one thing that I never look for. I never look for an excuse for anything. I look for the reason to make it happen. Amen. Yes, you're right. You're right. Yeah, and that's an awesome ministry, too. I've talked to Chris about it as well, and uh, and your pastor as well. And, uh, you, you know, we're looking forward to, uh, you know, starting to uh, air some of those recordings on Friday evenings on the Lord's Roundtable. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm excited about that because we need to hear that. You know, that we run into that a lot out here in the trucking industry. And, uh, you know, being that they're out here... You know, on the road, it's hard to, um, you know, it's hard to find help. And, you know, to be able with uh, help from you guys being able to put this on uh, the Lord's Roundtable, you know, giving this for the drivers to be able to come to. And, uh, you know, we're, we're excited about that. We're excited about that. I want to touch base with them all tomorrow and see what the final uh, solution uh, that we have on that. But if, uh, but if you would. Um, if you was if you, if you were talking to somebody right now and they said you know you're you're talking about all this stuff that the Lord has done for you and you're talking about you know how the Lord has spoken to you and uh, I want to know how I can have that in my life. What would you say to them? Um, what I would tell you guys is just you know uh, put your faith and your trust in in the Lord Jesus Christ because you know He's to me, and uh, he's the only salvation that we have. He's our only hope. And to me, if if you put that hope and that faith and that trust in him, uh, you know, he he will always, you know, provide for you. The Bible never stated that, you know, he would make you rich or he would make you uh, anything other than, what he has intended for you but the thing about it is he will always supply your needs but there again you know you've got to be willing to sacrifice a lot for the lord um yeah i have been blessed and but the thing about it is don't think that i haven't went through my trials um uh, uh a lot of times uh there's not enough it seems like there's never enough money to uh, do what needs to be done. But what's amazing is I've always got enough money 
to do what God wants me to do. And, you know, I'm, I'm able to pay my bills. But, uh, to be honest with you, I've not been on a vacation in about six years because I can't afford to go on vacation. But I don't care because what I do, you know, uh, I enjoy doing the things I do. The, the good thing that God gives me is he gives me that satisfaction of knowing, hey, you've done what I've asked you to do. And, you know, I go home at night and I'm able to sleep because I'm thinking, you know, I helped uh, get God's word to this individual. But it's not through anything I'm doing. It's just through God himself. Amen. You're exactly right about that. You know, it says that we can do nothing of our own, but through Jesus Christ, we can do all things. And that's what the exciting thing is. There's nothing that we're limited to. There's nothing that, that we can say, oh, that's too much for me. It might be too much for us, but it's not too much for God. You know, I love it where he exactly. says, call upon me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. And, you know, that in itself, you know, what can he show us? You know, we live in a society where we think we know so much. You know, we like with your soundboards, the electronics and, you know, and, and everything that's going on in this world, you know, with moonshot, you know, people going to the moon and, and being up there and connecting. And you know what I'm saying? All the technology, even our cell phones. They said we got more technology in our cell phones today than what NASA had when they launched the first moon, you know, the first moonshot. Um but, but he still says, I'll show you things that thou knowest not. And it's like, oh, my gosh, what is there? What could he show us? And it just amazes me. And, you know, we look for it each and every day. Okay, Lord, what today? What are you going to show me today? You know, what are you going to tell me today? And just having him speak to you is is awesome and great and almighty. You know, um, we was uh, we had a Bible study uh, Sunday morning, and the the point of the matter was was uh, it said you know uh, why can't we fix it you know and it, it's talking about you know why is it that uh, we try to fix everything ourselves instead of allowing the Lord to do it and the the thing about it was. You know, the more that uh, we got to studying it, we found out that, you know, you can't fix yourself. Only the Lord can do that. But the thing about it is you've got to be that willing individual that will allow the Lord to fix you. Everybody wants to be so headstrong because they know it all. And the this is the wonderful thing that I've learned about running sound and uh, everything else. You don't know everything. But if you'll keep that open mind and that willingness to learn, you can figure anything out because God will give you that answer, just like your salvation and everything else. If you will just be still long enough to allow God to talk to you, he'll give you a solution. Amen. You're right. You're right. And, you know, I've been uh, I've been really wrapping my mind around uh, the scripture where he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will come, you know, come to pass. And, you know, you look at, you know, the different situations we get into, and even as you're dealing with, uh, you know, the ministry with, uh, you know, celebrating recovery, you know, all the all the things that we feel that we need and that we're looking for, even with our, you know, our daily bread or, you know, our clothing or, you know, all these things that the Lord said that he'll give us. But it's first seeking God and seeking his righteousness and, and not worrying about all this other stuff because you can't do nothing about most of it anyways. You know, he says, why do you worry about tomorrow? You can't even change the color of your hair, you know, and you're going to worry about changing uh, everything that is going to happen in a day. But if we seek God and we just sit back and like you said, and be still, he says, be still and know that I am God. And you just sit and you just sit and you just, you wait to hear from him. You listen for him to have ears to hear as his Holy Spirit speaks to you. It's an awesome, it's awesome. And, you know, and, and my, when we think about those out here, we, we encounter them each and every day. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, people that, that don't know what we're talking about. It's, it's, uh, it's like it's a different language to them. 
you know, because they haven't uh, called upon the name of Jesus. And that is what we really try to stress here on the line when, you know, and on, um, on the radio when we're, when we're talking, that everything that we heard from you today, <coughs> as well as a lot of the testimonies from other guest speakers and that, God's not a respecter of man. He doesn't look at anybody to be any better than the next person. What he has done for you, he will do for another. It might not be bringing them into running sound for these professional singers or driving a race car, but it's things that is in their lives, what will edify them, you know, to enable them to do what the Lord has called them to do. God is a miracle God, and, and again, he's not a respecter of man. What he does for one, he'll do for another. And it's just, you know, it's, it's just so simple as saying, you know, Lord, I know I'm a sinner, and I know that in my condition, if something happened to me today, that it wouldn't be good for me. I would be, in, I'd be separated from God, and I would be casted into that pit of fire. But I'm calling upon the name of Jesus and asking him to forgive me of my sins to be my Lord and my Savior. And, you know, and, and that's all it takes. You know, I, I know myself, when I accepted the Lord, I, you know, I lay, went down on my living room floor and I called out to the Lord. You know, it didn't take more than what I said. I didn't know what to say. I wasn't a Christian. I didn't know all the big words, these and thou's and almighty and all righteous. I didn't know none of that stuff. I just knew, hey, God, I'm in trouble. And, you know, it didn't take more than a few seconds. I didn't go to a big church. I wasn't wearing a suit. They didn't have stained glass windows. You know, you could, uh, for the drivers that are listening, it could be in the cab of your truck. It could be in your bunk when you're sitting down for the night. Or it could be those that are sitting at home in their easy chair eating a bowl of ice cream. You know, it's just, just having that heart and knowing that without Jesus Christ, you're in a world of trouble. Knowing that because of Adam and Eve, we're all in sin. Nobody, the Bible says that there are none righteous, no, not one, that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And it's just, for those of you that are listening, and you have never made a confession of faith, you have never called upon the name of Jesus, the Word of God also says that today's the day of salvation because tomorrow's not promised to you. You truck drivers that are listening, you see it each and every day out here. We see horrendous accidents, helicopters landing in the middle of the highway, taking people away. We know the next turn in the road could be your very last turn. If, in fact, it is, and you're standing before an almighty God, you're going to hear one of two things. You're going to hear, come in, my good and faithful servant. And it doesn't matter how long that you have served God. It doesn't matter how long that you have called upon the name of Jesus. You become a faithful servant to him. Or you're going to hear, depart from me. You're a doer of iniquity, a doer of sin, and I know you're not. There's not no five-minute warning bell that you're going to hear. It's going to say, hey, you better get ready. You better get right because in five minutes you're going to face it. So I would encourage each and every one that is listening that has never called upon the name of Jesus that that would be your, the center of your focus right now. That would be the most important thing in your life right now. You think buying a house or buying a car or buying a semi-truck is an important decision to make? They don't even come close to making that decision of faith with Jesus Christ. If you have tonight in listening to our brother's testimony, awesome testimony, how God has moved in his life. And it's all because he was a child of the living God. Amen. If you have tonight in listening to this decided and made that confession of faith we'd love to hear about it we'd love to celebrate with you over that we rejoice when we hear of one coming to a saving knowledge of jesus christ or if you want somebody you want some questions you want to ask you want somebody to talk with you you want somebody to pray with you i would encourage you and i'll i'll say it slow and i'll give you this number slow and i'll repeat it again if you got to scramble for paper and a pen uh, i'll repeat it again but you could call 440 201-9826. That is a recorded line. You leave a message, I will get notification of it to my phone as soon as you hang up. That number is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And again, that number is 440-201-9826.
With that being said, brother, we definitely appreciate you being here with us tonight. Awesome testimony. Uh, I, you know, I know the compassion that you have. I sensed the, the emotions when you were telling it. And believe me, you weren't uh, feeling it alone. Uh, I was right there beside you, and I'm sure so many other words. When you see the healing hand of God reaching out like that, you know, it's amazing. He's the same God today as he was yesterday, and he will be tomorrow. When we wake up tomorrow, his word is going to be the same. It's never changing. Amen. So we, we, follow, uh, we follow a holy God. And, uh, you know, an awesome testimony uh, where he has brought you to. And, uh, you know, I, I will be talking with you in the future. I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see how he continues uh, with you on this journey that he's got you on. Uh, if I may, I would love to pray with you before we hang up here. I'd be more than glad. The, the one thing I would like to say before, uh, we've been doing... Uh, a thing at our church called uh, guardrails and guidelines. And the thing about it is, guys, when y'all are going down the road and y'all are uh, driving down, those guardrails that are set on the side of the roads, they're there for a reason. They're to keep you safe. They're to keep you in line. Just like our, like the Bible. You read that Bible, that is your guardrail that will keep you on the straight and narrow path that will lead you right to Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to have to talk about that. I like that. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Uh, we're going to talk about that at, at another time, uh, Lamont. Uh, but with that being said, let me uh, close us out with a word of prayer. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for this evening. We thank you, Father, for our guest speaker that has come here, our brother in the Lord. Not just a guest speaker. A guest speaker is a title uh, of, uh, of a position, more or less. But he's a brother. He's a brother in the Lord, as we all are in the family of God. And I praise you for that. I thank you for bringing him here. I pray, Father God, your hedge of protection around him and his family, Lord God, that you will bless them in a mighty way. And as he said, you've been opening doors up to him. And as he's teaching his son the trades and that, Father God, I pray that you would continue to bless them. Continue to open these doors, Father. You said that you'll give us the desires of our heart if we delight ourselves in you. And Father God, my brother definitely is delighting himself in you, Lord. And we see you giving him the desires of his heart. So, Father God, I pray that you would continue to bless him and his family, continue to protect them, let no hurt or harm come to him, no sicknesses, no disease, keep him healthy, keep him moving, and keep him running. As he ran out of the hospital that day, I pray, Lord, that you would continue to keep him running. So, Father God, we just thank you for this evening. I thank you for each and every one that's been here to, with us this evening. I pray a hedge of protection around you as you're traveling up and down them highways in them semi-trucks, or whether you're in a car or, or whether you're just relaxing on the porch. I pray God's hedge of protection around you and your family, and I pray the blessings as well. So you all have a, a great evening, a great weekend, and uh, we look forward to being back here again the beginning of next week. So uh, we're just going to praise the Lord, and uh, thank you, Jesus, and uh, we're going to give all the glory and honor to Almighty God. And uh, we will see you all again next week. Good night.